Welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank with Tennessee Tech University. And I'm Shan Stout with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Well, Shan, this is an exciting day because we have uh, someone who is really a hometown hero on the program today, somebody I've long respected and who, when we started this podcast, I was really hopeful we'd have the opportunity to host as a guest. Uh, his name is Dr. Sean Oceanbein, and, and that'll be a familiar name to, I think, a lot of our listeners. When he was here at Tennessee Tech, he was the SGA president. He was the Dairy Berry Award winner. He was the student trustee on what was uh, what was then our, our uh, role with the Tennessee Board of Regents. And uh, he is now an emergency room physician and a chief medical officer for several hospitals in East Tennessee. He's also the winner of the Medal of Valor. And when we talk about the Medal of Valor, you know, that is an award you receive at the White House from the president of the United States. And Dr. Oceanbein is most deserving of that honor. Uh, just wait until you all hear his story. And we also spoke with another former tech student body president and the current student trustee for the university, Miss Addison Doris. Now, Addison, she's a senior at Tech right now, but she has wisdom beyond her years. Talk about an impressive young lady. She is. It's remarkable what she's already been able to accomplish while still, you know, being a college student. And she's also where we start today's episode. So, uh, up first, our conversation with Tennessee Tech student former SGA president and current student trustee on the Tennessee Tech Board of Trustees, Addison Doris. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by Tennessee Tech's own student trustee and former student body president, Addison Doris. A Portland, Tennessee native, Addison is a marketing and human resource management major in Tech's College of Business, and she is slated to graduate in May of 2024. Now, Addison has also served as a Tennessee Tech President Ambassador, uh, a Student Orientation Assistant, as Director of Philanthropy for her sorority, Alpha Delta Pi, and as president of Tech's College of Business Ambassadors. That is a long list of wonderful things. And as the only student on Tennessee Tech's Board of Trustees, Addison makes sure her fellow Golden Eagles have a voice and a seat at the table in all of the board decisions. Addison, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to share a little bit more about the student experience today and, and chat with, with you, Shan and Jonathan, about all things tech. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you. And as our listeners can see, Addison is so friendly and engaging. So all of the wonderful things she's involved in at the university, she is well suited for. Now, you are someone who is clearly making the most of your time at Tennessee Tech. So we're going to ask a tough question, and I can't believe Jonathan gave me this question because you're going to have to choose a favorite. Of all the aspects of university life that you've been involved with, student government, the board of trustees, your sorority, the College of Business Ambassadors, so many others, what have you personally found most rewarding? That is such a tough question, and when I saw that question, I... I didn't know where I was going to go with it because each of those um, aspects of my college career have been rewarding in their own ways. I've learned something different from each one of them. The most, I feel like, overarching um, involvement that I've had that I've had for the longest time um, is Student Government Association. I, through student government and all of the roles I've held there, I've just truly learned the value of servant leadership um, and how being a leader isn't about a, t a certain title or a certain um, goal that you have in mind. It's more about the people that you're leading and especially in a collegiate setting, um, making sure that students' voices are heard and ensuring that you're hearing from diverse perspectives of different students because obviously my student experience is not the same as everyone else's. So just making sure I'm able to advocate for that. I, I feel like student government has really pushed me to be a better leader in all of the other areas of my college experience. Um, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at to serve on the board of trustees without student government. Um, it's helped me a lot within my sorority, having connections in the community to, to where I've made connections through student government. And now I can utilize that um, to help serve the community through 
direct being director of philanthropy and Alpha Delta Pi. Um, yeah, I just feel like student government has been um, kind of that stronghold for me throughout throughout my years, um, and I I can never say how thankful I am um, for that organization and all that it's it's taught me over the years. Jonathan, it sounds like we can add university diplomat to this long list. <laughs> I, I think you're right, Shan. That was well said, Addison. I want to go back to your initial decision to attend Tennessee Tech. Uh, I love how you explained it. These are these are your words. You said, at Tech, I felt like more than just a number. I felt like each and every person I met wanted me to succeed. And I so appreciated reading that because, you know, we say all the time at Tennessee Tech, it's personal. You know, that, that's one of our taglines, the, the, the decision for, uh, you know, for a student to enroll here, the kind of experience they have uh, on campus that, you know, that that's personal to us. It's one thing for us in the Office of Communications and Marketing to say it. It's an entirely different thing for you as a student to say that that, you know, that, that's that you felt that and that that really was the experience that you had. Um, so can you talk to us more about that decision process and maybe tell us a little bit more about how you've seen Tech's commitment to your success as a student, uh, you know, really demonstrated in the years that you've been here? Absolutely. So um, my mom is going to love listening to this because I'm going to tell her that she was right. Um, and I never even considered Tennessee Tech. Um, I'd always just thought of it as an engineering school. And my mom highly, highly encouraged me to come take a tour. And moms are always right. She was right. I fell in love with it as soon as I stepped foot on campus. Um, every single person I came into contact with just really wanted to invest in me and invest in my success. Um, and that did not change as soon as I came here. And it hasn't changed over the four years. Everyone is still in my corner and wants me to succeed. Um, it was also, I was especially grateful that I chose tech during my freshman year. Um, I graduated high school during 2020, right in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And after hearing from some of my friends who went to other schools and what they were going through, Tech did a really, really great job of ensuring that freshmen were still engaged and connected to campus during those really tough times. Um, and while keeping everybody safe, still um, fostering connections and engagement. Uh, and my college experience would not have been the same if I went somewhere else, especially with the pandemic going on. So um, I've just always felt so thankful that I chose Tech in the first place and that all of the experiences that I had right there at the beginning um, when everyone was was super supportive and invested in me have have never wavered. Um, those people are still in my corner and um, support me today. So wow, Addison, I see a freshman recruitment commercial in your future. <laughs> I'm very impressed. It makes me want to go back to tech. Okay, now, Addison, we call this podcast College Town Talk because, of course, we want to celebrate all of the great people and places that make Cookville, Tennessee's college town. So I want to hear some of your favorite spots in our region. So where would we typically find you outside of campus hanging around town? Yes, um, I absolutely love the city of Cookville. There, there's just so much to offer here, especially for college students at, when Tennessee Tech's call or Tennessee's college town is really true for Cookville. Um, for me, I love being outdoors. I love B Rock. It's just over in Monterey. I love Burgess Falls, Cummins Falls. Um, and then I love going out to eat um, at the local restaurants in Cookville. You can never really go wrong with any of those. Crawdaddies and Seven Senses are, are two of my favorites, as well as Cream City and Lazy Cow Ice Cream. I, I cannot pick between either one of those. There, there's a there's a debate between those two ice cream places, and, and I just can't pick because I love them both. Um, so I pretty much anywhere in Cookville, and I'm always excited to see what Cookville has next to offer. Um, I find new things, even though I'm in my senior year now, I still find something new um, every now and then that I get to go try. And uh, Cookville also just hosts a lot of great events, not just for students, but for the community like Fall Fun Fest um, and, and, the, and the Banana Pudding Festival and, and things like that that just make your college experience better, but just living in Cookville fun as well. Now, Addison, oh my goodness, if you decide uh, after you graduate that you want to uh, pursue a career in tourism, you can come see me at the Visitors Bureau anytime. I was going to say, I, I know that 
All of Addison's answers right there are music to Shan's ears. I'm loving it. I'm obsessed with her. I'm I'm your number one fan. I'm going to start a fan club, Addison. Thank you so much. Well, I think there would be no shortage of members in that fan club because in addition to having been the SGA president, Addison, as we talked about in the opener, you are uh, the student trustee on the Tennessee Tech Board of Trustees. It's a big honor and a responsibility, and you are sharing a platform on the board with some of Tech's most accomplished and influential alumni, uh, presidents and CEOs, industry leaders, even a NASA astronaut. So what has that experience been like for you and uh, why did you want to serve? Um, so my experience with the Board of Trustees has been amazing so far. We have not had our first official meeting where I'm the student trustee yet. Um, that is coming up and I'm very excited for it. But I have had the opportunity to network with a lot of the trustees, do my trustee training, um, those sorts of things. And it's really opened my eyes to just what the world of higher education looks like from that lens. I've really only seen it from the student lens and now I'm getting to see it um, from more of a higher level point of view. And why I wanted to serve, it kind of goes back to the same thing of um, I got involved in student government and getting involved in student government is where people come to you with the issues that they see on campus, but it's also puts you in a position to see all the great things that we have on campus that we don't always recognize or um, just promote to students. So I, I just think that um, my initial desire to serve stemmed from that desire to ensure students knew what resources they had available to them and also improving students access to certain resources on campus um, and just being an advocate for for the positive student experience that I've had um, like I said earlier everyone has a different experience and so hearing from students of diverse backgrounds and diverse perspectives um, to ensure that they're having just as positive of an experience as I am is, is really important to me and ensuring that the board members who may be a little bit far removed from their college experiences um, kind of know what it's like to be what be what it's like to be a student in 2023. So um, I'm super super excited to to start um, getting more into the board meetings and the board meeting season um, and getting to connect with them further on some ways that we can improve the university. Well, Addison. The university is very blessed to have you as an adv advocate and ambassador. You're their cheerleader. So I don't think you're going to have trouble with our final question of today's podcast. We like to end each interview the same way. So here we go. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Oh, I thought that was going to be easy. And it's just not because it's impacted my life in, in so many ways. Um, I wouldn't be the person I am today if I had not chose Tennessee Tech four years ago. Um, the people that I've met, the programs I've been involved with, the um, the opportunities I've been given, I just don't think I could have found that anywhere else. Um, I've been absolutely blessed with um, areas to grow professionally, personally, um, and within my leadership that will, that will serve me for years to come. Um, I think the overarching theme, though, of all of that and what makes tech feel so great to be a student at is the people that are here. Um, each and every person that you meet at Tennessee Tech, like, I, like I've said earlier, is invested in your success and invested in making sure that you have all the resources available to you that are that are possibly out there. Um there, there are so, so many um, people, mentors that I've gained from just being a student um, within the College of Business. I've, I've Ms. Sherry Cannon and Ms. Julie Galloway have impacted me beyond what I could have ever imagined. Um, within student government, Dr. Ben Stubbs has been one of the best mentors I've had um, in my entire life. And I just think um, I would have never found the passions that I've had and have the direction that I'm going in in my life now had I not chose tech four years ago. So um, I, I it's impacted my life. It's impacted my entire life. There's not there's not just one way. Um, it's impacted me in every way. Well, I think that's wonderful. And we are rooting you on in your future success. I can't wait to see what you're going to do in the coming years. But I just want to personally, on behalf of Jonathan and myself, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And for our listeners, learn more about the Tennessee Tech Board of Trustees at tntech.edu slash board. Welcome back to College Town Talk. 
We are now joined by a decorated Tennessee Tech alumnus, Dr. Sean Oceanbein. Dr. Oceanbein is an emergency room physician with Ballad Health in Johnson City, Tennessee, who now also serves as the chief medical officer for three hospitals in the Tri-City region of the state. As a tech student, Dr. Oceanbein was student body president, winner of the prestigious Dairyberry Award, Tech's highest student honor, and was a student trustee on the Tennessee Board of Regents. Before even coming to Tech as an undergraduate, Dr. Oceanbein was here as a Cookville High School student when he served as governor of American Legion Boys State. Arguably, Dr. Oceanbein's most significant accolade, however, was awarded to him not in Tennessee, but in Washington, D.C., specifically the White House, where in 2018, he received the Public Safety Officer Medal of Valor by then-President Donald Trump for his heroic efforts in 2016 saving a driver from a burning vehicle. Dr. Oceanbein, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you for being here. It's awesome to be on here, Jonathan and Shan. I'm uh, so excited to be here. Well, we are thrilled to have you. Now, your career has been marked by a selfless concern for others. I think it was that selflessness that was on display when you rescued that man from that burning vehicle. I'm sure it required bravery, quick thinking, your training uh, as an emergency room physician on the front lines of COVID-19, and your selflessness continues in the work you do every day as a medical professional. But uh, in fact, uh, the chief physician executive for Ballot Health, being your role where you work, has called you the definition of a public servant. Where do you think that concern for others came from? Well, Shannon, first off, I, I appreciate you saying those nice things. And Jonathan, it is awesome to be on a podcast, first off, about Tennessee Tech and the surrounding area. Um, as you all know, living there, it's an amazing place. And anyone that comes there as a student, anyone that travels there to either hike or see one of the waterfalls realizes kind of what the region has to offer. Um, but when, when it comes to service, one of the most important things that I would want to kind of partake on to the, to the listeners is that you have to see service to really incorporate it into your life. And what I mean by that is you need to have examples of service. And I'll tell you a couple uh, there locally, and two of which, and this is, there's a whole lot, but one is, you know, David Anderson, which is the assistant chief of the rescue squad in Putnam County, and then the emergency medicine, the emergency management director that would just retired, um, Tyler Smith, and has uh, other roles now within the area. These gentlemen, I was able to watch them waking up at countless hours at night one, two, three or four in the morning responding to emergency calls. And I was watching these individuals that had families, big careers, getting up in the middle of the night and performing service to the community, not asking for anything back. They were doing that because they felt like it was a part of who they were and it was a part of the, the civic duty that they feel like they needed to, to put onto their community. Um, and that is something that that really kind of, you know, imprinted on me. But it also started off in high school and college. And, I, you know, when I hear, you know, you know, Dr. Reynolds, you know, talk about me as a civil servant, it, it really becomes a part of your DNA if you start doing it early in life. And, uh, you know, being a part of Interact uh, within Cookville High School and then Rotaract at Tennessee Tech and continuing that service it, it, it becomes one of the aspects that brings you happiness. And I think that when someone thinks about doing service, they never really internalize how much it's going to brighten their life and how much it's going to make their life better. But without a doubt, um, service is a two-way street. When you provide service to whatever organization or population you're, you're providing service to, it gives you life fulfillment and it gives you that ability and that energy to get up every day. So that, that's really where my drive comes from um, and my career path is finding avenues where I can serve and finding avenues where you can serve to get paid to do it too. If you're, if you feel like you're, you're in a career where you feel like you're serving a need and you're getting paid to be able to put food on your table at home to do so. I mean, that is a, that is a win-win that is the Holy grail. Um, and, and I feel like that in my current role, and so it's it's a blessing to be kind of marked as a, as a leader of service. 
um, but it's also a responsibility. But to those out there that are that don't feel like they're serving or don't feel like they're giving enough back, they just have to try. They have to sign up for a road pickup of trash. They have to join a rotary organization. They have to really search out that volunteerism and start doing it. And once they start, they won't be able to stop um, because it's addictive and it fills your heart with joy. So I, I think for me, you know, it was a learned skill, but it, I also embedded it into who I was as a person in my life. And I, it's just never changed. And it, and it brings me great happiness. OK, I'm going to have to start taking notes because uh, that, that was that was really profound. Uh, Dr. Oceanbine, you've had this once in a lifetime experience that most people will never know. And that is, you know, being the guest of honor at a White House ceremony with the president of the United States. So for our listeners, can you kind of take us behind the scenes of that day? Are there any memories that stand out in your mind? Uh, any special people you got to meet? And um, th th this is not a political question, but just a curiosity that I have, maybe some of our listeners too, like what were your interactions with the president of the United States like? How did you find him uh, to, to be that day? Well, I, I think that's a great question. Um, because if you've not visited the White House or you've not been to D.C., I would recommend any of the listeners, they need to go. And you really feel the essence of the United States and the, the kind of the heart of our country and patriotism when you go to the White House and when you go to D.C. and kind of meet the people that are there working so hard on making sure that we have a great country. Um, one of the things about the White House is everyone is incredibly nice. Everyone's very accommodating. Um, and one of the things that is shocking uh, to someone like myself that, you know, is not someone that goes to a lot of fancy parties or kind of, um, you know, big kind of events is that I was in one of the rooms and I was talking to one of the security uh, individuals that running was running the event. And there was this gorgeous painting of Benjamin Franklin. And it was huge and it was in either the red room or blue room and i'm sitting there looking at this painting and i'm like gosh this is awesome looking and it had this big gold you know wooden border around the frame and you could see like the paint sticking out of the painting where you could almost like break it off it was so thick and i look at the gentleman and i go that is a really awesome painting uh, and i and i ask a funny question i go is that the original and the gentleman kind of looks down and he kind of looks back at me and he goes, sir, you, you know, you're in the White House. Everything's the original. <laughs> and I just kind of laughed because, you know, I, I think uh, someone like myself never would expect to be in the White House or, or particularly meeting the president in the White House. But one of the other kind of aspects that was interesting is they really did trust us to roam around everywhere. And so I was able to walk into the presidential library and other um, rooms with no one else in there except myself. And I was really kind of able to have the solace moment of looking at some of the art, looking at some of the books, looking at some of the swords from the Revolutionary uh, War and realize that we, re we really come from a, a cool heritage and a cool history as a country. And it's something really to be proud of. Um, but the president was, was very nice, very gracious. It, you felt like you were walking into a, a friend's house. That's how everybody approached you. And that did surprise me. I expected it to be very stuffy and, and rigid where like if I looked down a hallway, I wasn't supposed to look down. Someone would kind of grab me and push me away. It was not like that at all. It was, it was very open, very accommodating. Um, and I was in, uh, after the ceremony, we're in a room and, and everybody's kind of, you know, having a good time. You know, I, I think I, if I remember, I had a, a, you know, a new Belgium in my hand, enjoying some conversation. And I walk up and I just start talking to the CIA director at the time, which was Mike Pompeo, who later became Secretary of State. And what also impressed upon me was how normal the conversation was asked how the flight went, you know, what, you know, what, what are you currently doing in Tennessee? What are your, what are your plans? He talked, he introduced me to his wife and what they were doing over the weekend. And it really, it really kind of made me think that normal people every day do extraordinary jobs and they work really hard to do that. And so 
it, it just motivated me as a person being there to be around those people that, I, that, you know, life is precious, time is precious and, and to work hard for those around you because all of those people there were doing that. So it was, it was a cool experience. It was motivating and everybody should get up there and, and take a tour. Well, that had to be such an honor. Now, Dr. Oceanbein, we've mentioned briefly your current role with Ballot Health, but we should add that you were recently elevated to this position. I think it was back in August. So first off, congrats on the promotion. Thank you. (laughs) And now you are the chief medical officer for Johnson County Community Hospital, Sycamore Shoals Hospital, Unicoi County Community Hospital. What does that work entail? And I'd like to know, uh, what does it mean to you to already be at this prominent place in your career? Well, it, it's, it's an honor, first off. Anytime patients come into a hospital, you know, they, they pull down their armor and they give up freedoms of, you know, being touched and having an IV placed and an x-ray image, maybe even surgery. And just like when a fire department arrives at your house, you expect them to put the fire out to be kind, you know, not to put a watch in their pocket as they're walking through their house. There's this sense of security and respect that when you come into a hospital, you're going to have amazing care. You're going to leave healthier than when you came in. So you can spend more time with your family. And, you know, as a chief medical officer, I get to work with all the team members, whether it's nursing, it's lab, it's our surgery center to make sure that when patients come into the hospital, they not only feel welcomed, but they feel like they're safe and they have really, you know, quality care. So what I get to do is work with teams of people that want to provide that care. And then I augment them with the skills and the necessary, you know, um, really kind of processes and workflows that they need to provide the care they feel like they want to set for the patient population. So I get to go over, you know, all kind of protocols, workflow, um, and make sure that the care that we provide here at these sites is of the highest quality. And one of the things that's really impactful to me is that we use this care ourselves up here in East Tennessee. You know, every chief medical officer, every physician up here has a story of where one of their family members was either in the hospital recently or was cared for in one of the outpatient clinics. And so it, it is really, truly a calling for myself, um, knowing that I am going to use this care one day. My family has already used the care in the area, and I get the opportunity to make sure that care is of the highest quality. So it, it's, it's an honor to be able to do it. Um, I can tell you that um, if, if people wonder how, you know, someone, you know, gets a title or has more responsibility, it, you know, I'll tell you one thing. It's not because they search it out for one. It's because they, they work hard in the current role they're in and they dedicate themselves to their team. Um, you know, I see myself as someone that enables others to succeed. And when I have problems brought to me, that's how I look at them. Um, I I love problems brought to me because then we have something to fix and we have something to work on. And that's how I orient my brain around how I work. And I think because of that, I've been able to, you know, participate on committees, chair certain committees kind of at a younger age, just because I come at it with a very positive viewpoint. And I'm also a very problem solver mindset. So no matter what field you're in, what, whether you're, you're working in healthcare, you're working in finance, you start your own business, you have the ability to impact other people's lives every day and either add value to their day or subtract value. And if you're someone that adds value to every person you interact with every day, you are going to crush life and you're going to find that it's, very, uh, it's a very pleasurable thing to wake up every day. And that's just kind of how I, uh, I find myself, you know, into the role that I'm in now. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's a calling and, and I'm very lucky. Dr. Oceanbein, you are someone that tech students today can look up to as a person who has been uh, highly successful, both as a student and now as an alum in your post-tech career. And I know you're called upon to give advice and encouragement to students often. Uh, you, you came to campus, did that earlier this year at American Legion Boys State. Uh, so for tech students who may be listening to this podcast right now and they're thinking about their futures and their passions, uh, what advice would you give them? Well, I, I, would, I would say a couple things. One, set the bar for yourself very high. If you have a dream 
or if something makes you happy in life, then you need to chase after that with every bit of spirit you have. You need to wake up early, you need to go to bed late, and you need to search out the subject matter experts in that field. So if, for example, if you like, you know, space, then you need to be going to all the space conferences. If you like, you know, tapestry and art and painting, then you need to go to all the conferences you can find about that. And you need to follow the experts online and emulate what they do. Um, one of the things that social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter has, you know, really kind of unleashed is people's ability to find subject matter experts and then learn from them. So I'd say that's number one, set the bar high for yourself, find subject matter experts in what you love, and then get around them as much as you can, reach out to them, see if you can shadow for free, do anything you can to be around that individual so that you can be a part of what they're doing if that's what makes you happy. Um, so so those, are, those are the kind of big things. And then I would say, one of the second most important things of success in life is trust. No matter what organization I've been in, friend group, trust is something that is measurable um, in, indefinitely. And as you gain more trust with somebody, your relationship is better, your work ethic is better. But something about trust that's big is that once you lose it, it's almost impossible to get it back. And, you know, that can be with, you know, someone telling you a story and they're and then telling you not to tell someone else, or it can just be you lying to an individual about something they question you about. I would charge everybody that listens to this one to never lie about anything. And then if someone tells you something in, in confidence to keep that uh, with yourself and don't spread that around, you will find that you um, have a lot more friends that way. And that people end up elevating you to positions um, even younger because they know you're a trusted source and you're not going to be spreading information around. So that's that's really friendship, right? So elevate yourself, set a high bar, search out experts, be trustworthy, and then foster friendships would probably be the next thing. Um, friends outside of work and in work are your tribe. And you need to identify who those people are. You really need to have like three or four people that you feel like you could call on at any time during the day and they will be there for you and you should be there for them. And if you don't have those three to four people in your life, you need to identify those people and you need to pour love into them and you need to pour time into them. You need to call them more regularly. You need to answer more of their birthday messages because at the end of the day, when we get older and life grinds on, our friends are, are what we have that hold us together as people. And, and let me tell you, we all have ups and downs. We have the high points where our friends should celebrate, and then we have the low points where our friends should pick us up. And so long-term success in career and life really comes down to having solid friends that you can call on uh, when things aren't good and when things are good. So I would say surround yourself with those three or four people that make you better and that you can pour love into and they'll reciprocate that back uh, because it's really important. Um, don't be afraid to care for people. I would say that's another thing. Um, don't be so armored that you can't show love to others. Um, and whether that's opening the door for somebody or carrying out the trash, if you can change your mind to a service mind of, of trying to care for those around you, you'll find that um, not only life is a lot better, but people will then pour love and care back into you. And life is just a lot more enjoyable that way. Um, so there's, there's so many help books and things you can learn about leadership or advice on life. But gosh, if, if you're, if you're nice, you show up on time and you care for people man, life is going to be a cakewalk for those people that do that. And they're, and they're going to find success just falls in their lap. Well, Dr. Oceanvine, when you write your book on mentorship <laughs> and ethics and this beautiful core belief system that you have, I want to be a, I want the first autographed copy and I am willing to pay double. Um, we like to end each interview the same way. So here's the big question. What is the, one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? I would say the biggest impact on my life at Tennessee Tech was 
impressing upon me that individuals contribute to a common goal to bring people together in a community. Um, you know, whether it was, um, you know, the, the athletics director or it was the director of the cafeteria at Tech, um, whether it was one of the coaches of the football team or one of the professors, uh, one of the deans, everybody together um, had a common goal of the, the really the student succeeding and finding themselves at Tennessee Tech. And when I was walking around campus at the end of my four years and people knowing by me by name, me being able to say hello and give hugs to them walking through campus, that is something that I've never forgotten. And Tennessee Tech in particular, um, when I left, there were so many cohesive people in different departments throughout the university. It really felt like a big family. And that is something that I have found now here at Ballot Health is that people have a common goal of making sure that the citizens in this area have the highest quality health care. And there's some very passionate people that work here that want to see that happen. And Tennessee Tech was very similar that there were, whether it was the athletics director or the student director, the dean, um, you know, the dean of students, everyone had this love for students and they were willing to do anything to make sure that they were successful. Um, so I try to carry that to what I do now um, and make sure that we have a goal that's set and that that goal is something that everybody's moving towards in one direction. And I feel like Tech did that amazingly well. Um, and it was also, it was surrounded by a community that also had that belief. You know, Cookville and the Upper Cumberland supported Tennessee Tech in a way where when you were there as a student, you felt a part of the community and you felt like you lived there way more than four years if you were, when you moved there. So as a freshman, you come in to Cookville as someone that's been there many, many years and that's something that's really special about that area uh, is how the community embraces the students. And that's whether it's the restaurant, the parks, um, there's so many places that just open their arms. And um, it, it, that I never forgot that um, going to Tennessee Tech is just how special the area was and how that kind of highlighted with the school. And every time I'm back on campus, I just, my, my heart just fills up with joy uh, because I have so many great memories from there. I love it. You, you couldn't have given a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's a special place. <laughs> well, I can tell that yeah. your uh, wings up, pride runs deep. Dr. Yes. Oceanbine, thank you so much for being our guest on College Town Talk today. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thank you both. We want to thank Addison Doris and Dr. Sean Oceanbein for being our guests today on College Town Talk. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please take a moment to subscribe, review, and share. Join us again next week for more conversations from right here in Cookville, Tennessee's College Town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.